welcome to Shelf Indulgence Book Chats. Today I have with me the president of Chickenlandia, Dahlia Monteroso. Am I saying your name correctly? You are. That's very good. Good, good, good. So you know her as the president of Chickenlandia, but her non-feathered friends call her Dahlia. Some years ago, Dahlia decided to bring home 10 little chicks and start a hobby. <laughs> that hobby quickly grew into a full feathered passion that she couldn't stop talking about. Before long, she was part owner of a farm store, teaching beginner chicken keeping classes and delivering seminars across Northwest Washington. While the store has since closed, Dahlia continues to help others start their chicken keeping adventure while sharing peace, laughter, and inspiration. Welcome, Dahlia. Thank you so much for having me. Well, the homeschooling community relates so much to what you do. I I'm not a homesteading homeschooler. I, I like chicken, usually when it's on my plate. Um, but I, I will be honest, I'll just, I have to keep it real when it comes to that. So please forgive me, all of my vegetarian and vegan That's friends. Totally okay. I <laughs> but totally I do have several friends in this area, and I'm in Fort Worth, that they, they do keep chickens, and this is what they would like to learn to do. And it relates so much to homeschoolers and homesteading. So I wanted to, I'm glad we got to connect and we get to talk about your beautiful, beautiful book today. Let's all keep chickens. Yes. So I'm, it's, it's beautiful. Oh my goodness. I'm going to show some images up here, just a little bit of it so you can see the beautiful, beautiful photography in this book, but also written from a very, very, you don't have to be intimidated from what I looked at, because I, I think taking care of anything other than a plant and my child is intimidating for someone like me. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I think, I think a lot of people feel that way. In fact, I'm not that great at taking care of plants. So, <laughs> so unless I'm growing them for my chickens, somehow if I'm growing them for my chickens to eat, I can keep them alive. But sometimes it's like, oh gosh, I feel guilty. It's like, sorry, sorry, plant. Well, the chickens, the children, you know, any other pet that you may have, they'll kind of come to you and let you know the plant is just, you're on your own pal. Yes. <laughs> so sad. Well, well, let's talk a little bit about how did you get started with keeping chickens? How did oh. this all start for you? Well, um, I, okay, how deep are we going to go today? Um, <laughs> so, did you want to go? Okay. I was, I'm just going to start at the very beginning. I was in Hollywood. I was a personal assistant. Oh. And then I was working at Lifetime Television. And during that time, I met a man who became my husband. We got married. And we decided we were going to have children. And we were like, you know what? We don't want to do this in Los Angeles. So we moved mm. up here to the Pacific Northwest. I'm in Bellingham, Washington. And I had my first child and I was completely in love with my little boy. I was so happy about my family and everything. But I will tell you that I, I did feel like I, I felt the loss of my dream because when I had originally went to LA, I was like, I'm going to be mm. the next American filmmaker. I'm going to be you know, I'm going to write for television and movies and I'm, you know, I'm going to do all this stuff. And that did not happen. <laughs> Obviously mm. that didn't happen. It's hard. Um, yeah. Yeah. I did some fun stuff. I did some really cool stuff, but it, I didn't make a career out of it down there. So I was mourning that and I didn't realize how mm -hmm. much I was mourning that. And then on top of that, I did not know, but I had a pretty, a, a pretty intense case of postpartum depression and it was like mm -hmm. prolonged. Like people, a lot of people don't understand, like it can last years. Okay. And my son was 18 months old mm -hmm. and I was still really in the thick of it. And I didn't, I didn't know, like looking back now, I'm like, okay, that's what was going on. But mm -hmm. I think, you know, and I, th I think we've, you and I have talked about this before because we chatted a little bit yeah. before this, but I think as women you know, and as mothers, especially, we mm. will just do everything to take care of everybody else around us. 
literally yeah. until we're like, you know, yeah. falling apart, which is not, that's actually not good. Like we shouldn't do, we shouldn't do that. And, you know, back in the yeah. day we would have like generational support and these days you don't have that. A lot of people don't have that. Um, so I was, str I was really struggling and I, I think I had just felt on top of all that, a real loss of my identity. I didn't know. I was like, you know, who is this new person? I, I'm a mother and I'm a wife and I love that. Mm -hmm. But beyond that, what am I? And so naturally I said, you know what? I'm going to get some chickens <laughs> because of course that's the next logical One step. One more thing to take care of. I got a dog. Don't feel bad. Yes. Well, we've got dogs too. Anyway. <laughs> So I went to the farm store, I got 10, you know, of course I did like all, you know, I was like obsessed. I was like researching, reading all the blogs, you know, back then it was like blog, blog. Now it's all YouTube, but back then it was blogs, yeah. blog, blog. Um, and it's funny that my website says 10 years ago, because definitely it's more than that now. <laughs> but um, so I, I did all my research and everything and I got these baby chicks and I, I actually call it like divine intervention. I do not know what in the world happened to me. It was completely unexpected. But when I took those baby chicks, I got them in a little paper sack. They came in a paper sack. <laughs> and when I got them, I, from the farm store and brought them home, I was like taking them one by one and putting them into the brooder that I had made for them. And, my, you know, my heart opened and a new dream came in. And I just became so passionate about these animals that so much so that six months later, the, the local community college was like, hey, can you teach a class? And I was like, what? Um, I was like, I've had them for six wow. months. But I did not say that. I was like, yes. <laughs> and when sure. I, yeah, when I was done teaching that class, a woman came up to me and she said, you know, I have had chickens for 30 years and I learned more today about them than I, than I ever knew. And I was like, okay, that's it. Like I'm, I'm hooked. Purpose. Mm -hmm. And I just, I kind of feel like I was appointed, like I was like, I was elected president, you know, <laughs> and well, here I am. Like, it's kind of, it's kind of where my life has taken me. I did not know this is where my life would take me, but, uh, that's, that's the story. That is a beautiful story. And I think. It is one that so many mothers, homeschoolers are not, that we can relate to. There is so much with when we, when we become mothers that we, we struggle. I struggled too with that identity crisis of, especially if you were a professional mother prior. I, after our son was, I closed my practice and we moved from Georgia to Texas with a two month old. And so I'd been a professional my whole life. And so I was like, well, now what? I literally been trying to structure my day. Like, we're going to play time here. And we're going to do with a, an infant. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We know how that goes. Cause I, yes. Cause I couldn't figure out what do I do now? I don't, you're, it's that adjustment. It's that period of adjustment. And with that, that loss of identity and it's, it is a lot. And we, there is still, unfortunately that stigma that is attached to the postpartum depression as there shouldn't be. I experienced some as, as, as well. It's so common, not the 18 months, my goodness, that you, that, that is a long time to go. Uh, even from a personal experience, from a professional opinion, you know, I'm a therapist. That is a long time to go untreated. And kudos to you for hanging in there for that long and finding yourself again through that. That is so inspirational for every mother for the ones who are not, who may not realize that's what they're going through. Yeah. And who may not know how to say, I need help because we're supposed to do it all ourselves. Right. You know, yes. we're supposed to, of course, yeah. we don't ask for help. You know, moms don't get sick days. We don't. <laughs> yeah. And especially for mental health, you know, just pull your bootstraps on and move on. I'm being completely facetious. Totally. Yeah. But <laughs> I think completely, totally, totally facetious. 
that there's something in that, in your journey, that you found your purpose again through the cutest little fluffies. I almost wish I could see a picture of those little chicks in this paper bag. I can send you one. I can send you one. Oh, please do. <laughs> please do. I, I want to see that. I, I, okay. I totally do. Because giving up on that dream, if it's of, of losing that that you had, you, you've lost it in a way from Hollywood. But I don't think that is where you were probably meant to be. You know that now. Hindsight's obviously, there's so yeah. much double edged swords of gifts in hindsight, if you will. But it led you to where you are now. It's all the trials, as we say. We're, we're a faith based family, but it's all the trials that you go through, and you, you kind of have to go through it to get through it to get to where you are. Yes. I but it led you to this. I mean, this beautiful place that you are now of changing lives with chickens. I know, like who knew, you know, that, that would be the way I would get the message out into the world, you know, peace, love, and chickens. Thank you so much. I, I really do because you never, life always, it's so funny how sometimes we end up getting our dreams in, in ways that we never thought were going to happen. Yes. And it's those unexpected ways. And usually it's, it's in my faith and in my belief, it comes from, oh, okay. So this was his plan, not mine. And this is how I got there. And it's like, oh, okay. I get it. I get it. And there's a lot of surrender in that. There really is oh, a lot yeah. of surrender in that. Yes. Do you surrender and I do, do, I do want to make one thing, one thing clear. I'm not in any way saying that chickens cure postpartum depression. Oh, <laughs> I just me want, either. My disclaimer is rolling, you know. That's not what I'm saying, but, um, I think it, it, it did help me. It really, I did start to heal at, at that point, you know, yeah. and there was, there were trials after that, you know, I did have to work on it after that, mm -hmm. but, um, it really, it really helped. And, and, in, and, in, you know, I just think a, a major way is it just got me outside every day, you know? Oh, yes. Yeah. And that, that mm -hmm. is really valuable because you can end up just, especially with a newborn, you know, you got a little kid and it, you can nest too much. You know, there is such a thing where you're, you're inside too much and you really do need to get outside and, and breathe the fresh air. There's something very healing about that. So yeah, it was definitely good for me. <laughs> Yeah, it's getting outside in general is, is good with the vitamin D that we all need, actually. And so many more of us are now deficient in it because we're, we're doing this, I'll be yeah. honest. So if you're listening to this podcast or if you're watching it, take a walk outside. I know. <laughs> if you're listening to it, podcast. get out of some fresh air. Yes, we actually, our brains respond differently. And um, when we have a little bit more of that sunlight and of that nature and that stimulation, go on your daily walk. And when you do, take a different route each time. Because that yeah. actually helps you cognitively. You build, we call it laying new train track, but you are building new neural network pathways in your brain, which is going to help you think. It's going to pull you out of that depression. It's going to help you with so many different things. But that's me going down the therapist rabbit hole because that's what I do. <laughs> but no, chickens, it's not going to cure your postpartum depression. I think instead it's more of remember you're important. Remember you have needs too. Whether your needs is, for me, it was writing, getting back into a writing group and eventually doing this, whether it's getting chickens, whether it's going to sit at a coffee shop or, you know, going to stare at a lake or go for a walk. Yeah. You have needs. Your needs are important and you cannot pour from an empty cup. You have to fill up your cup. Yes. Yes. 100%. So what inspired you to write your beautiful book? Well, uh, I did a TEDx talk in 2017. And in that talk, I spoke about how I really felt like chickens were humankind's most amazing common denominator. That's like a, a little, a little saying that we have here in Chickenlandia. And I really wanted to promote the idea that, you know, when you're out in the chicken yard, it's more than just, you know, I've got chickens and I'm getting eggs. Uh, mm -hmm. Maybe for, for some people, it is, that's all it is. But for a lot of us, and I've realized this since I got chickens, it is, a, you know, a moment to be outside, to connect with nature. For me, it really helped me to connect with who I am because I ended up learning about my ancestry through it. And, you know, if you think <laughs> about it, 
there are very chickens are in all of our ancestry. You know, unless we're True. like really, we live on that island. You know, with, <laughs> with those people that you know that tribe of people that no one has ever talked to. Okay, or maybe deep in the Amazon. You know, wherever you are, you very likely have chickens in your ancestry. So I was like, wow, you know, this is kind of a way that we can all connect with each other. And another, mm -hmm. and another thing that we have in common that most of us have in common is that somewhere in our history, in our family history, there was a severance between ourselves and, and our culture. So, and when Ooh. we, when that happens, it's, it's a disconnection from nature. So actually the, the disconnection from nature happened, like with industrialization, if I look at, back into mm -hmm. my family, back at my family history in Guatemala, you know, they lived in villages, they had a very natural life, they grew their own food, they had their own animals. And then industrialization and war happened. And that is a traumatic event. Sure. And we, we all, like, no matter what, no matter what your race is or your culture is or whatever, most of us have that kind of, tra of, of, of traumatic event in our history. Mo most modern people have that, especially in the Western world. So... That is another way that we're kind of suffering from this collective issue. And mm -hmm, mm -hmm. getting chickens was a way to begin to heal that. And I saw how important that was. And I thought to myself, everybody needs to have this experience, especially after I started actually started writing it before uh, COVID happened. And then I had gotten through a lot of it. I had like pretty much like the, the bones of the book done when COVID started, when, you know, when it started happening. Yeah, I, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We no. were homeschoolers prior, so not a whole lot changed, but I think we were home a lot, lot more. Yeah. No yeah. field trips. But. Um, and I would go, you know, in the beginning, it was scary. Like, no matter what. Yeah, it was. You know, we didn't know what it was. Everyone kind of took sides. And no matter what side you were on, <laughs> really, in the beginning, everybody was scared. You know, most people yes. were like, what is going on? And so I would go out into the chicken yard. And that would be my way, you know, my time to, like, breathe and to calm down and to remember, you know, it's going to be okay. And I thought to myself, especially when the lockdowns happened, I was like, gosh, you know, there's people in apartments. There's people that don't have mm -hmm. any, there's people that have no access to this. And where I am, they, they closed the parks too. Mm -hmm. And so I was They like, did for a while here too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was like, this is like, everybody needs to have access to nature. Like no matter what's happening mm -hmm. in the world, we need to have that. And I thought about my great grandparents who lived, I mean, in my, in, in Guatemala, there was a civil war that started, um, in the, oh my gosh, in the fifties and it lasted 40, almost 40 years. And my grandparent, my great grandparents had this little plot of land that was, you know, kind of up against a lot of jungle and stuff where in the jungle, really the small villages and the jungles that's where all the fighting was happening but they were just on their land and i thought you know there's something about growing your own food and being connected with the earth that really survives the, <laughs> the all the strife that human beings can create so mm -hmm. you know i'm thinking i know i'm getting like really deep <laughs> No, I think we need it. Okay. We've gotten so, so, so superficial as a society in so many things that we've forgotten. Yes. To go deep. And I, yeah. <laughs> and I think it's so important for us to, to reconnect with that. So what I wanted to do with the book, because there's a billion chicken books out there. Like when, oh, I, okay. when I started <laughs> writing the book, when I contacted the publisher initially, she's like, Hey, you know, the editor was like, you know, there's a lot of chicken books out there. Like, yeah, you got a ton of books and they'll, and they're all good. Like I, I've never picked up one that was like, this is trash. You know, they're all, they're all good. Respect to chickens. Yeah. 
they're all good books with good information in them, you know, depending there's different, different philosophies and stuff, but they, they're all, they all have good basic information. Mm -hmm. So I knew that my book had to be different. And I thought, you know, I really want to highlight not just taking care of chickens and, you know, especially if you're getting started or if you're intermediate, like it's a great book just to have as a reference and it's got a lot of information in it and you're going to learn how to start with chickens and care for your chickens in a, in a, a natural leaning way. Cause I do lean very natural. Mm -hmm. Um, but I also wanted people to understand really the meaning of what they were doing. So I put in the book, you know, there's a little bit of my story. It's not like, you know, it's not an ode to my life, but <laughs> there is some of my story and how I, how I got to where I am now, how I reconnected with my ancestry through the practice of chicken keeping and how I've really found, um, you know, peace and joy in my life through this practice. And that's what I, that's how I wanted to differentiate it from other chicken books. I really wanted to say, look, this is not, you know, you know, in the book I call chicken keeping, chicken keeping an heirloom that's been passed down from generations. Mm -hmm. And it is not only a wonderful way to learn about yourself, but when you learn about yourself and you, mm -hmm. you know where you come from, you have more compassion for other people. And so it's a way yeah. really to make the world better ultimately. And that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to save the world one chicken at a time. That's what I say. <laughs> I think it's more than that. I think you're helping people learn how to save themselves at a time. That's what's so different about your book. That's what's so different about your channel and your podcast is sure it's about chickens, but it's personal. And it's about the one thing that we've gotten away from so much. It's about relationship. It's about yes. community. And that is what we all need. Yeah. But it's the deeper part of community. You're asking people to go there with you and you go there too. You're going to go there first um, with the personal side of it. Because you can, I mean, as a therapist, I can tell people go all day, you know, all day, go, go personal with that, go deeper. But if I don't show you that I'm willing to do it too, that's just lip service. Yeah. Yeah. I, so I do you're reminding try, people, I try to do that. You do, but I think that's, that is what is different about it. And that is what makes it different. And you did that with purpose, with intention. And it shows. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Sometimes I'm like, am I just shouting into the void? Like, <laughs> oh, I think we all feel that, especially to our children. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, did, just shouting did, at did a wall. Yeah, you know, Emma, hello, I'm here. There's not even a screen in between us, but I'm still, hi. They just tune out our voices. They do. But back to, back to your book and to your, really your kind of mission field, a la chickens. You're, it's almost therapeutic in a way of, of what you do and how you're reaching out to other people. And I think that people, whether they recognize that that's what it is or not, we all have that innate capacity to recognize genuineness. And if it's off and it's not there, um, we're going to pull away from that. Yeah. I don't think your channel, your book, anything that you've done would have grown to the level that it has had your genuineness not shown through as easily as it does. It's very natural. And people pick up on that and they gravitate to it. Thank you. Thank you. That's <laughs> what I'm trying to do. That's what I'm trying to do. And it's so good to hear that because that really is what I want. You know, I want, I want people to come away from my content, whether, no matter what it is, and mm -hmm. feel good about what they're doing, feel confident about what they're doing, and understand that they're, that they're participating in something that is, is very important in the world. So. Mm -hmm feels good to hear that you're accomplishing that <laughs> and that's why i want you in my community i say my community but you know you were a homeschooler briefly were you not the whole country was briefly who am i kidding oh yeah well there was that <laughs> i didn't do great with that. we won't go down that rabbit hole but i i typically talk with homeschooling authors or authors who have something that i fully believe can contribute to the homeschooling community and there's so much of a connection between what you do and what you've written about and well, because of who you are and your genuineness and how it shines through, 
that is what we need in the homeschooling community. We need more of that. And that's someone who's just out there too, because even in your work, yes, I, I know you want to sell a book. Of course, that's how that goes. But what you do for free on YouTube and what you give of yourself away in it, I have zero desire to keep chickens. I want to put that out there right now, but I watch your videos because of how you make me feel. Oh, thank you. And that is the connection. I'm like, I'll watch you keep chickens and support you and cheer you on. I don't want to do it myself. But at the end of the day, if I've had a rough day, you know that that's what we need. We need more of that, more of that genuineness, more of that real and more of that encouragement. You show us your trials too. You show us the struggles that you're going through. I'm still scared of roosters, but <laughs> that's my grandmother's Maybe rooster's fault. He was one, really like mean. Yeah, the little, the little tiny ones, like I have little ones. My roosters are small. And okay. when they attack, it's just like, oh gosh, you know, <laughs> what are you doing? Now, a full sized rooster can really do damage. People, and I was a little girl. And they're not all me. They're so, not all me. Yeah. This one but, was. Um, <laughs> yeah. The, a full -size I would say the chicken coop for a minute. minute. This was yeah. a good old fashioned Alabama rooster. Mm -mm, mm -mm. I'm done. All done. All done. No more roosters. Yeah, they grow big in the okay. south. They grow big. <laughs> One of my granny to cook him so bad. That's so. <laughs> well, Dahlia, where can we find your book? Let's all keep chickens. Well, you can find it on Amazon, of course. You can sure. find it, Yeah, you can find it at Tractor Supply. I'm pretty sure it's like at. Target and Walmart and Barnes and Noble, okay. those places. If not, I'm sure they all can the usual do suspects. Yeah, all, all the usual suspects. But what you should do is go to your local bookstore and ask them if they have the book. And if not, they can order it for you. Um, but of mm -hmm. course, you know, you can certainly get it get it online. It's available available in all those places. We will put some links below in the description box as well to help audiences find your book. You have a little surprise for our listeners as well. What is that? I do. I am going to give away a book to one of your lucky listeners. Uh, it will come, forgive me, it will come from Amazon. So you, they need to know. <laughs> When they, get it, they get like a random Amazon box that is going to have my book in it. But I just wanted to, you know, do something fun for your listeners and show my appreciation for your community and giving me this platform and everything. It's been really great. And, um, you know, I, I hope they love it. I think they will. And thank you so much for thinking of us. I'll put some information in the description box below so they can find out how to, first of all, definitely go and subscribe to her podcast and subscribe to her channel and this one too, please. <laughs> and to let us know and put in, you know, a comment in the section below, in the comment section below to let us know how you've liked this episode. And we will give some information on how you can register to be a part of that giveaway. Mm -hmm.